All right, guys, welcome back. I am here to show you a video on uh, identifying and labeling functional groups. In the last video, I went over uh, how to identify them uh, with the chart, and here's this chart that I'm talking about right here. Okay, so just go back and look at the previous video. All right, now. Uh, the first one that we're going to look at is uh, this one down here. It was a screenshot that I took from uh, one of my previous tests. So let's go ahead and see what we can uh, find out. Now, um, let's go ahead and uh, start identifying them. All right, this first one right here, this is our first functional group. Okay, now this one that I am circling is an aldehyde. Now, a lot of people will just circle this much. But really and honestly, what they should circle is all of this. Okay. Now, I tell my students, I'm fine with either one because what I want them to be able to do is just identify them rather quickly and I'm okay. It doesn't hurt my feelings. I know that they know uh, that this is a functional group, that this is an aldehyde. So I'm okay with them not circling the carbon chain here, the C, which uh, in the um, in the notes here it's denoted as an R. Okay, but like I said, I'm okay with my students not doing that. You may have a more strict uh, professor or teacher, and that's fine. Just go by what they say. So for simplistic reasons, I'm gonna circle this, and this tells me that this is my aldehyde. So this would be number one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is write that on this, you know, screen here. I'll come over here, and click a text box, and say number one is uh, an aldehyde. Now I'm not the greatest speller in the world. Some of you may be great at it, but I want to have to look here. Aldehyde, aldehyde, A L D E, aldehyde. Okay, hopefully I can remember how to spell that. L D H I D. Okay, so there's that one. Uh, the next one that I'm going to easily identify is this one. Okay. Now notice I didn't circle the R, so don't get mad at me. Okay, this is my second one, so I'm gonna put the two here. Now, this, if you look closely, we know it's either an amine or an amid. Okay. So let's go back and look at the chart. Now, on amine and amid, what is really the difference? Well. What I always remember about an amine is it's saying it's all mine. M-I-N-E is mine. Okay, meaning this nitrogen that has the H2 or the N has an H or the N is just by itself is basically holding on tightly to the carbon chain alone. But notice that on a mid, the amid has to admit that it's sharing that carbon chain with the double bonded oxygen. So that's how I remember it. So what I want to do here is I'm going to tell you that this is my second one, and it is an admit. Now remember, it has to admit that it is sharing this double bonded oxygen, uh, well, th that it is sharing with this double bonded oxygen to this central carbon. Now remember, where you see a little dent on these line structures, that's where a carbon is. Okay, so this nitrogen is having to share its carbon, basically its R, with this double bonded O. Okay, so that's how I know it's an, an amid, not an amine, because an amine would be saying it's all mine. Um, now, the next one that I'm going to identify as the easiest one is this one. Notice that this is a double bonded O uh, binding to a carbon. Okay, and it's that's it. There's nothing to the left or there's not anything to the right. So I know it's not sharing that central carbon with anything of importance. Okay, so I know that this third one here is a ketone. So I'm going to label that. Ketone. Okay. Now remember, if you're not sure about spellings, just like I am, even, you know, the best of us can't spell. Some of us that are above us can spell great. They can do it all. Uh, I'm not a great speller, so I always have to either memorize these uh, before the test or uh, still to this day, I'm so used to looking at the sheet because being the teacher, I don't worry about spe 
about the spelling because I can quickly look at it, reference it, and everything. And that's the way it is in the job job world anyway. If you need to know how to spell something, Google it or ask Microsoft to figure it out for you. Uh, but anyway, uh, so there's my ketone. And notice that the ketone is double bonded to the central carbon and it's not having to share it with anything to the, its left or to the right. You know, as far as like on the aldehyde, the double bonded O, which was attached to the central carbon, had to share that central carbon with the lone hydrogen. And there's the other carbon chain. So that's how I was able to figure out the difference between those two. Uh, the last two, uh, basically, if we look, let me click on the brush, this is a double bond, this is a double bond, and this is a double bond. And so since that's a double bond, then I know that this, whoops, I need the text. I know that that then, this f number four, oh, my bad, I didn't say it was four. This number four here that I've identified by circling uh, is, well, one of the most basic structures. Um, we have our alkanes, alkenes, alkynes. So alkanes is single bonds, alkenes is double bonds. So this is an alkene because those are double bonds. Now, one thing that I want you to know is if you cannot find any immediate functional groups, then the whole thing is either going to be alkane, alkene, or alkyne. Okay. Now let's make sure that I spell this correctly. Let's go back and look at the sheet. Alkene, A-L-K-E-N-E. -E. There it is. That's the double bond. Um, whoops, that's one of the other ones I want to do. And those are the other two that I want to make a video on as well. Um, finally, the last, the last one. Okay. Now this is a chlorine. It's all alone. It's a, we know it's an aldehyde. Uh, but basically, I don't believe that that is in my list and it's not but that's a chloro group so I want to put a 5 on this and we'll call it a chloro group so I'll come over here and I'll say number 5 and we'll call it chloro okay but anyway uh, just go back and uh, watch the video again and again and I'll try to put up about uh, two more videos uh, over this and hopefully you'll get a better feel for it and hopefully I'll get better at spelling <laughs> one of these days. Anyway, I hope it helps and y'all have a great day.